honestly, this was a show, going into it, I couldn't care less about WWE Fastlane. But after watching the show, it wasn't that bad. It actually was pretty good. Let's start with the beginning on the kickoff show. We saw the New Day. I'm talking about Big E and Xavier Woods. They defeated Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura. Pretty good match, but I have to admit, I feel a little bad for Rusev and Shinsuke. They're not really doing much with them. On to the main show, though. We get the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The Usos defeat The Miz and Shane McMahon. It's odd to see The Miz as a face. I know he's been a face like once before, but I still I still feel weird seeing him in his hometown with his father there hugging him and trying to get cheered. And hey, people are cheering for him, so I will give him that. And there was a great spot in this match where Shane McMahon was on the turnbuckle and I think Jimmy Uso was also on the other side and they had a standoff staring at each other. And then when Jimmy jumped off for a splash, Shane caught him in midair with a kick and just the way how they collided, it just it looked like a video game moment. It feels like I've done something like this in a video game so many times. And then they lose. The Miz gets pinned for a second time, and the Usos retain, and then Shane attacks The Miz. Now, I was expecting them to break up after this match. I was expecting for one of them to turn on the other, but I did not expect Shane. Shane going heel is very interesting. I don't know if I love it just yet, but it worked. The crowd booed him, and he got into Miz's father's face. It was a whole thing. I loved how later on, when the girl was trying to interview Shane and he didn't even say anything and just turned right back around, closed the door. So I can't wait to see what heel Shane McMahon in 2019 would be like. I haven't seen a heel Shane in how many years? So that should be interesting. The SmackDown Women's Championship match, Asuka defeated Mandy Rose. This match didn't really interest me, I'll be honest. It just kind of happened. A little boring. Sonya Deville was also out there and she was trying to help Mandy. I just, I don't buy Mandy in the ring with people like Asuka. I'm not saying Mandy sucks. She's a lot better than somebody like Eva Marie or something, but she's just, she's not ready for this spot. She's not ready for this role. There's plenty of other girls who probably should have been put in a match with Asuka and it could have been a lot more competitive. It could have been a lot more believable, but. At least Asuka retained. She got the win. There was some issues with Mandy and Sonya. Maybe they'll break up. I still think that they should fight for the tag team belts at some point before they break up. Because we just created tag team women's belts. And you're already breaking up tag teams. The New Day is backstage. Uh, Big E and Xavier are talking to Kofi Kingston. Because he's been waiting outside the McMahon office for over an hour since the pre-show. They just barge in there. And Vince is there. Very weird moment where Vince says that he was waiting for Kofi for over an hour. But clearly Kofi said that he was told they weren't ready for him. And he had to wait for over an hour. At Vince's age, I don't think he even realizes what's going on in the storyline or what he's supposed to be saying. But they try to convince Vince, hey, Kofi deserves this. 11 years, he should be put into the WWE title match. And Vince agrees. Very easily, I should have known something was up. But I just figured, hey, maybe they want to put Kofi in the spotlight. Vince says, hey, Kofi, it will be a triple threat match for the title. And go right out there now. It's next. Kofi goes out there, gets a great reaction. Until you find out that, no, it's not a triple threat match. It's not for the WWE title. This is a handicap match. And Kofi has to fight the bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. This I did not like. I get that they're trying to build momentum for Kofi and stack the deck against him to get people to cheer for him. But I don't think this is the way to do it. The fans started to chant boring, not because they were disinterested with Kofi. Clearly they weren't. But they just didn't care to see this. Nobody really wanted to see this. I don't think this did any favors for anybody. Sheamus and Cesaro pick up the win. Oh well, hopefully they know what they're doing. The Raw Tag Team Championships triple threat match. The Revival defeated Chad Gable, Bobby Roode, and Ricochet and Aleister Black. I've talked about before how much I don't care for Ricochet and Aleister Black as a tag team. I like them Separately, I like them on their own. I think they're both great in the ring, and they were the most exciting parts of this match. 
but as a tag team, they just don't really fit together or match up together. But okay, at least they're being used. At least they got a decent spot here. At least they didn't get pinned by the Revival, who pinned Gable and the Revival retained the belts. I still don't know what we're doing with the tag division, why Rude and Gable are still a tag team. Here's a special match. United States Championship Fatal 4-Way match. Originally, Rey Mysterio and Andrade were supposed to fight on the kickoff show, but I guess somebody changed their mind. So instead, they're in this four-way match along with R-Truth and new champion Samoa Joe. This is basically the same match that we got on SmackDown, but I think this one was a little better. We got some great spots here with Samoa Joe looking very strong. He made Rey Mysterio pass out from the sleeper, so Samoa Joe retains. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with Joe going into WrestleMania. Some people say that he may be fighting John Cena. If that's the case, I'm all for it. The Women's Tag Team Championship match. I almost said this is the Raw Women's Tag Team titles because we've only seen these belts on Raw. They haven't showed up on SmackDown yet. Bayley and Sasha Banks thankfully retained the titles against Nia Jax and Tamina. I was not impressed with Nia and Tamina. I mean, I've never really been impressed with them, but I thought they looked especially sloppy in this match, especially Nia when she couldn't even hold uh, Sasha Banks up at one point for a Samoa drop. It just, it looked so bad. Thankfully, Bailey pinned Nia and just, I wanted to be done with this. I did. But then Nia and Tamina start attacking them. So I thought, oh great, are they going to fight them again? I did like the spot of Beth Phoenix getting in Tamina's face. Beth was doing commentary and and she didn't like what she was seeing with them being attacked. She attacked Tamina. Nia attacked Beth. Then Natalia came out to help Beth, but she too got attacked. So I don't know what this is. I don't know if, if Beth and Natalia are going to fight Nia and Tamina, or if maybe Beth and Natalia are going to challenge Bailey and Sasha Banks at WrestleMania. Maybe it'll be a three-way, but I think WWE has been doing way too many triple threats and three-way matches lately, so maybe we should hold off on that. But I do like the idea if maybe Beth Phoenix will be getting involved or doing some return. WWE Championship match, Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali. So this was a pleasant surprise. It was a triple threat match, just not with Kofi Kingston. I feel bad for Mustafa Ali because originally he was supposed to have the Elimination Chamber spot. He was supposed to get that big push, but because of his injury... Uh, his his concussion, Kofi got that spot, and Kofi now has the fans cheering for him, and they're all behind him. And even they were chanting for Kofi's name so many times during this match that Mustafa's just... He's he's a victim, man. He's just somebody. He's great in the ring. He got a huge spot in this night, in this title match, but nobody really seemed to care. Daniel Bryan pinned Mustafa after an insane collision Mustafa jumped off the turnbuckle and, and Brian just ran into him with a knee. Owens, I thought, looked really great. And I think, I almost think I would have rather have seen a one on one match with, with Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan because I think Owens is a decent face. I mean, I'm curious to see what more he does as a face. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. This whole feud, I am just losing so much interest and so much steam. I don't like Becky being injured right now. Like that aspect of the story I think is dumb. Her coming out on crutches is dumb. It's something to where they're trying to gain sympathy for Becky, but she doesn't need it. The crowd just naturally likes her on her own. I don't think making her look weak or making her get beat up every single week is something that's helping her. It's clearly not. I'm starting to get sick of seeing Becky fight Charlotte as well. I feel like I've seen it 175 times over the last six months, and that's probably because I have. And with this whole fake injury, oh, I shouldn't say fake. That's that's the wrong word to use, right, Rhonda? But with this whole injury, they, they couldn't deliver. They couldn't have had the five-star match that we've seen them have before. So this just felt like a placeholder. This just felt like a match that was killing time, especially when Ronda Rousey just came out there, attacked Becky, got her DQ'd, and got Becky to win the match by DQ. So sure, fine, it makes sense that Ronda wants Becky in the match, but it seemed too easy. It seemed like we went through all of that storyline, all of that stipulation, all of this hype, 
just to easily get from one place to another. I feel like we could have gotten here a lot quicker. I still don't even think Charlotte should be in the triple threat match, to be honest. It should be Becky and Ronda one-on-one. I am sick of Ronda, especially after that rant that she gave on her YouTube channel. Anyways, let's move on. Elias, for the third time, came out there. I guess his job is to recap everything going on throughout the night. He's sitting out there. And Lacey Evans, who, speaking of being sick of, what's the point of this? She hasn't wrestled since the Royal Rumble. She only comes out there to walk down the ramp and then turn back around. And It might have been funny the first time, but you do it over and over and over again. It's just, it's dumb. It's doesn't make sense. I don't understand why they called up any of these NXT people just to do virtually absolutely nothing with them. I'm sorry, EC3, but yeah, you've, they've done nothing with you. And then Randy Orton with an RKO out of nowhere. That actually was great. It did come out of nowhere. And then AJ Styles came out of nowhere. So I assume that's going to lead to a match between the two of them at WrestleMania. But our main event is a six-man tag team match. The Shield versus Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre. This match was great. It was. I almost forgot how much I missed seeing the Shield as a unit, as a group, in a six-man tag. They just they looked great. They dominated. The crowd was super hot for it. I love the moments where they fought into the crowd. Seth jumping off of the balcony and doing all those crazy moves. I was... Worried, and I was wondering if Ambrose was going to turn on them, turn on Roman at certain points, but he never did. They did the Shield triple power bomb two times, once through a table, once on Corbin. There was a couple times where I thought Corbin was going to get the pin on Roman, and, and I, man, speaking of if that would have happened, that would have shocked me, that would have been unbelievable, but they got me. They got me a couple of times with those spots, but the Shield did win. Roman did get the win. It was a feel-good moment. It was nice to end the show and end the night on a positive note. Overall, the pay-per-view was pretty good. Not great, not amazing, not blow away, but there was enough good stuff in there. I hope that Mania picks up. I hope that I give more of a shit about WrestleMania. Obviously, if Ronda, Becky, and Charlotte are really going to main event WrestleMania, then we need to do something here. Because that's the feud that I'm getting worried about. That's the feud that I am losing hope for, and I'm losing it quick. So guys, let me know in the comments below, what did you think of Fastlane? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Are you too worried about the Becky, Charlotte, Ronda thing? What do you think is going to main event WrestleMania? What should main event WrestleMania? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!